a senior in high school and graduating in Alaska this year, uh, you would qualify for four years of scholarships going forward. The seniors of 2017's graduating class are the last, uh, would be the last group that qualifies for the Alaska Performance Scholarship. So, uh, and then uh, fresh or freshmen in college, they would continue for three more years, the sophomores would continue for two more years, and the seniors would complete their programs this year. As far as uh, the BSA and the fairness and waiting, we've drawn uh, over $10 billion from Alaska's savings accounts. Uh, other uh, departments that are constitutionally required, public safety, uh, other areas, e even portions of health and human services, have taken big cuts. Uh, we are trying to fairly distribute across our resources um, th those cuts. Education is taking up over 30 percent, I believe, right now of dollars that are um, undesignated general fund dollars. So it's huge when we go to look at um, any cuts when you hold that large of uh, a department harmless. So the department itself has taken almost a 7 percent cut in, in what they can provide. and. Uh, it's, it's just, we're, we're trying to manage in a very difficult situation the use of the savings that we have remaining in our accounts. Shauna, next. Uh, Shauna Crandall, Alaska Education Update. I have two questions. Um, the total, so you're cutting 69 million from the BSA, but you're adding 100 million to something else. And, and what funds will these be? Like how much in general funds and how much in what sources in other funds? Well, Senator, sixty-nine million is the, the reduction to the BSA. The other funds, if, if I might, Senator Hoffman, what Senator Hughes was referring to was money that would remain in the uh, Alaska Performance Scholarship, as it's called today. If we're successful in working with the other body and creating the Alaska Innovation Education Grant Fund, all funds remaining would be available for future allocations. Uh, that process includes Department of Education and Early Development working with school districts to talk about transformation and innovation and come uh, to the governor and present their proposals to the governor. And should he include those in his, his proposal for FY19, then submit that request to the legislature. So it's not an apples for apples. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have done inside of apples for apples, inside of various pieces of legislation, and one of them is Senator Hughes's, provided ways for districts to uh, respond to a cut in this year's BSA. And so one of those responses is not requiring, and I believe it's an every, inside of Alaska regulation, we require every six years every curricula, curriculum to be reviewed and go through a very extensive process that takes time and money away from the classroom. And so in the curriculum uh, bill, with the, working with the Board of Education, we are trying to suspend uh, that particular task so that the Board of Education working with the commissioner can finish the work on the Alaska challenge and actually have recommendations for the legislature. That should save the district some money. Specific uh, more to rural Alaska, uh, so the curriculum touches everyone that they can choose to stop or not go forward in the next two year cycle, two years, three year cycle with what they're doing. I'm sorry, I'm pausing, Sean, on what I was going to tell you on the, the money. I lost it. Um, excuse me. So um, there will not be very much new money this year. It will depend on whether next year's legislature wants to appropriate any money. So is that? Thank you, Shauna. From the funds that Senator Hughes was referring to, that's a true statement. Uh, if, the th if all three pieces pass, the curriculum and the E-rate could immediately bring a, about $16 million to those communities that have broadband through either microwave, satellite, or uh, fiber, um, then those schools could see a direct, uh, a direct allocation to them. But that money would have to come, as we propose in this legislation, from the pot of money that's sitting in the Alaska Performance Scholarship Fund. So there would be money available for the rural school district in FY18 should the legislation pass. And our, our vision is that is not that the legislature was control, would control the criteria for the innovation grants. We, our vision is that the Alaska Education Innovation Fund would 
um, be available to the Department of Education Early Development and the State Board to define a criteria for those innovation um, grants and how they'll be awarded. But the legislature would still have to appropriate it Senator Hughes? Yes, and I also want to say there will be some funds available immediately through SB 96, which we hope to pass out to the Senate Finance Committee, and they'll be looking at that fiscal note. But there are, we are um, expanding opportunities for districts to um, work cooperatively with other districts, with nonprofits, tribal organizations, even business. Uh, to streamline, modernize, and we will have cooperative agreement grants available, and they will be fairly sizable. And so th those are further tools, as well as relieving them of a number of requirements to give them more flexibility in their budgets. We're, we're going to lift the fund uh, cap balance. It's been at 10 percent to 25 percent, so that if they do incur savings, instead of that rush at the end, you know, use it or lose it, they'll ha there'll be an incentive to roll those savings over, as well as any savings derived from these cooperative agreements. Those will not be subject to that cap balance, but those also can roll over. Uh, we're just uh, reducing the requirement for the double minimum wage bus drivers, uh, paying the bus drivers if they want to continue to pay them that, that they can. Uh, we're doing a number of things of relieving them of, of requirements which will allow them to function more efficiently and save money. Thank you. Nat. <clears throat> Good morning. Nat Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, recognizing that you guys have basically very difficult choices here, um, the House majority seems to be saying at this point, um, such a cut to education as you guys are proposing would not be necessary under their fiscal plan, which includes an income tax and some type of changes to oil taxes. Can, can you guys explain why, in your minds, uh, this option that you're taking is better than an option that would balance the budget and you know eliminate this deficit that's driving this cut through the income tax and oil tax changes? Senator Hoffman, would you like to take that? <clears throat> well. We're still waiting for action from the House on the one issue that the Governor, the Senate, and the, the House agree upon, and that is restructuring the dividend program. You know, and from the Senate's viewpoint, that is a must have. People may say that uh, it is going to happen. We heard that last year. Uh, the Senate took action, uh, we took action early, and we want to continue to focus on what all three of us agree upon. So hopefully um, we don't end up in, in a situation where the biggest um, piece, uh, as we see it, is not acted upon. Um, what, the, what the House is doing with their, their tax plan and 115, um, combining the two, we believe is is putting, uh, uh, does not meet the single subject rule. And uh, if we agreed to go down that route, we may end up with a, a Zobel situation where it would be written off the books. So I would uh, strongly uh, support dividing the two. Um, if they can get the votes for them, uh, then they would be considered our Senate President has said so. But at this point, we need to concentrate on what we think is accomplishable. Um, it took the, uh, the other body uh, a little bit longer to get the operating budget. Uh, they have had uh, uh, one hearing on Senate Bill 26. Uh, uh, prior to that, uh, multiple hearings on HB 115 and are concentrating on HB 115 again. Um, so what is a better plan? I would say let's take these one step at a time. Let's get the one that we all agree upon out from under us and know at least we've got something that's accomplished by this, the first session of the 30th Alaska Legislature. Senator McKinnon. 
Thank you, Senator Machicki. Now, we, we can't afford to wait. We, we've been waiting uh, for decades uh, for some changes. I believe uh, in my uh, term in the legislature, we've been through three uh, commissioners of education. I, I believe that's the right number. We have a commissioner of education that is working with school districts right now to look for change. So we need to set up a tool that is available both to the administration and the commissioner of education and the board of education so that they can actually fund a proposal if they're successful in working with districts and bringing something forward. We don't have new funds to do that with. Uh, so that's why we're, ch we're we are trying to reprioritize and focus education dollars where they're constitutionally mandated in K through 12. But it, it comes with a price, and that price is you have to work with the administration, you have to seek the governor's approval, and you need buy-in from the legislature that this truly can transform education and that our students can compete. I think about everyday math when I was a, a mom with kids in school. Uh, as a PTA president, as on the board for five years, I went to, the, to my principal and said, it just doesn't work. I don't know how or why one plus one does not equal two. I do not know how when you pour one cup of water in a cup uh, and then you add two and it overflows that somehow one is the right number when one and one is supposed to equal two. And that's how I felt as a parent working with some components of everyday math. And so I would just say that we don't, we don't have time to wait. We've been waiting for years uh, to provide education and opportunity for themselves to innovate. And many schools are, and we have great achieving schools and wonderful teachers that are working hard and students that are excelling in all different regions. But overall, when our students test, they don't fare well nationally or internationally. And as a country, we are sliding with those numbers in test scores. And test scores aren't everything. Uh, kids who don't do well on tests still can be high achievers. I want our students to know that. But we have to do something differently. And we have um, a, a new uh, commissioner of education that I believe is trying to partner with districts to look at change. I just, I just want to, I mean, I, I, the question was, why is the option that you guys have outlined today better than the option of raising new revenues from an income tax and an oil tax. But let me just say it quickly. The House has done nothing to pass over to the Senate a piece of legislation that will do anything to solve our budget. There is not an income tax over here. There is not an oil tax change. There is not use of our earnings. So when the House is able to advance a piece of legislation, then I think we can take up the question again. But until they act, uh, all they've done is talk about it, and so I respect that. It's difficult to move major pieces of legislation, but just talking about it doesn't mean that they can do it. So, and I, I have to, there's 13 days left, and we haven't <laughs> seen a thing. We passed over Senate Bill 26 early. It's a complete plan with a certain set of um, factors that can change. Right, and I've talked to you about that, Nat. The reality of it is, even with their income tax, if we have see a significant reduction in the cost or value of oil. We still have a gap. We plan to use the wisest use of use of our reserves, but cutting had to be a solution. It continues to be an important part of this um, solution. We've cut 44.6 percent with a combination of operating and capital, 26 percent in operating alone. The Senate um, wants to, um, feels the need for this to be the most efficient government as we look to Alaskans and say, we're going to be reducing your dividend, we're going to be making the most wise use of our um, reserves, and the reality of it is a um, slight increase in the value of oil along with our cuts. We're looking at a fuel tax brings us extremely close to balancing the budget. It is a plan. It's as complete a plan as a plan including income tax. Just depends on where oil goes from here. And one other point, I think that the ICER study said you know, they highly recommend not to do everything all at once in one year. And I think that's sage advice. Uh, we should go march forward and get something accomplished unlike what happened last year and looking forward to working with the other body to get at least something accomplished this session as is the governor we have uh, liz and then katie quinn online i'll go to katie after i go to liz who's been waiting 
Liz Raines with KTVA. It appears unlikely that the House majority is going to agree to this level of an education cut. So why take the heat from school districts for a cut that's unlikely to actually be implemented? I'm, I'm happy to take that question. That has been a difficult one for years. The reality of it is, had cuts that the Senate had proposed over the last few years gained more ground in the House, um, Senate Bill 26 would be guaranteed to be the entire plan. We have struggled for responsible cuts. If we don't propose a cut, again, we, we have demonstrated that education is the Senate majority's pr number one priority by the lack of cuts that we've proposed. It's the first one of the BSA. And uh, we're happy to sit at the table and negotiate the best outcome with the House. And we're happy, <laughs> I'm not going to say we're happy to take the heat from educators. I mean, I've got four kids in the system. Today, we know that uh, there will be um, a, uh, an active... Uh, there will be active participation from educators from around the state that are arriving today to come to each of our offices and to kindly let us know how they feel about education cuts. But without a proposal and the Senate being willing to make the tough choices and have this discussion, the discussion will not occur. So that's our role. We, we feel that it's important and um, we expect uh, what we're going to hear from educators. Our message to educators is the message we've had all year long. Walk across the hall, please walk down to the House, ask them to pass Senate Bill 26. When we've got that across the finish line, we can take a better look at what may be remaining in the future and then talk about filling any remainder, remaining gap, if there is a gap remaining by the time we get back together next year. So we have one last question from, let me get Katie's because it's 9 o'clock and then you can do a closing if you'd like. So Katie, Quinn, are you online? I am. I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. Thank you for calling in, Katie. Senator Hughes, as we wrap up quickly. Thank you. I just want to make the point. This is, it's, it's, it's just really plain and you really need to soak it up. Overall spending on education does not correlate with academic achievement. Let me say it again. Overall spending on education does not correlate with academic achievement. However, spending in the classroom does. And that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to focus on the students. For far too long, I almost have a sense in this role that we've somewhat given up, that our kids just really can't do better. And we as a Senate majority, we believe that our kids can do better. And by being innovative, we think we're going to begin to close the achievement gap. I'm excited to work with this commissioner. He has a heart for the kids. Well, you know, we care. I, I, I've told someone, I said, this is not, I'm not being fluffy and emotional, but deep in my spirit, I know that we can do a better job for our kids. And virtual education, I, I do want to just mention Governor Parnell started, started that effort, and I thank him for that because I think it is, a, it is one of the main keys that we need to unlock for, for students across the state. And you know what? We probably, even though for a few years we've been asking the districts and the schools to innovate, it hasn't happened to the extent it needs to. Some have been doing a fabulous job, but we need to ha it to happen across the state and what we're facing right now, now might just be what will make that happen. You know, sometimes when you get in a tough spot, you have to make some changes, and that's what we're doing. Transforming education is going to help our students. And so with that, Mr. Majority Leader, um, I just am looking forward to the conversation that we can have here going forward as we begin this journey. Thank you, Senator. Thank you all for coming today. Follow-up questions go through Daniel and, uh, of course, on any other subject uh, whatsoever, we're happy to respond. So thanks for being here today.